Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. been several big budget film musicals lately, but this year some interesting entries in the genre have been happening on a smaller scale. Unlike the high profile all star productions like Les Miserables and Into the Woods, these musicals come from independent studios, feature smaller casts and or lesser known source material, and have limited theatrical release. They are essentially niche market material, something expected to appeal mainly to hardcore musical geeks. But if that's you, and I don't know why you're watching this if you're not, these movies are worth at least an iTunes rental. The last five years came out in February, but I didn't review it then because I was busy with my annual Oscar analysis. It's a two-person show about Jamie and Kathy, who date, marry, and break up over the course of five years. The gimmick is, Jamie's perspective is told chronologically, while Kathy's is in reverse order. Think Memento meets Merrily We Roll Along. The score is by Jason Robert Brown, and it is the single best reason to watch this movie. Seriously, the music is amazing, and it's beautifully sung by Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan. The songs range from heartbreaking to hilarious. Kathy's A Summer in Ohio is particularly brilliant. I could wander Paris after dark, take a carriage ride through Central Park, but it wouldn't be as nice as a summer in Ohio, where I'm sharing a room with a former stripper and her snake. I love you, Wayne. Oh my god. Unfortunately, like some Sondheim shows, <coughs> company, <coughs> this magnificent score comes out of characters I don't really care for much, especially Jamie. Kathy has her fair share of passive-aggressive codependent issues, but it's really hard to sympathize with her self-absorbed prick of a boyfriend. I've heard it speculated that Jamie can be hard to empathize with because Kathy opens the musical with the beautiful and sad still hurting, and that gets us on her side right away. I can definitely see that, so you can't really blame Jordan for having to deal with an uphill climb. Jamie is over and Jamie is gone. Jamie's decided it's time to move on. Jamie has new dreams he's building upon. And I'm still hurting. But as I've said, the movie is worth seeing for the music and for the excellent vocal performances of its stars. Even if you don't like the characters, it's still worth hearing what they have to say. And speaking of time spent in undesirable company, that's a central theme in Lucky Stiff, based on an obscure off-Broadway musical by Stephen Flaherty and Lynn Ahrens, the team behind Once on this Island and Ragtime. It concerns Harry Witherspoon, a down-and-out shoe salesman who discovers that an uncle he has never met has named him the sole benefactor in his will. Of course, there's a catch. In order to claim the money, Harry has to take the uncle's corpse on a dream vacation in Monte Carlo, Weekend at Bernie's style. Except this was written before Weekend at Bernie's. Throw in a representative of an animal shelter who wants Harry to fail so she can claim the money for charity, the uncle's murderous and dangerously nearsighted mistress, her neurotic brother who gets dragged into the whole thing against his will, a fortune in embezzled diamonds. Yeah, the whole thing is pretty deliberately silly, and the movie makes it even more so, especially by throwing in these odd animated transitions that don't really add anything. It's almost self-consciously farcical and tongue-in-cheek, and the low budget leaves some amateurish gaps in the production. Note the modern keycard hotel doors in a scene supposedly set in the 1970s. But it's fun overall, and the music again is a strong point, especially a bizarre Dr. Caligari-esque nightmare sequence. I just want Say hello to rent, always overdue. Say hello to shoe after shoe after shoe after shoe after shoe. And Nikki M. James has a lot of heart and charm as the dog shelter rep who becomes Harry's rival and inevitable love interest. I don't have any audio from the film here, but trust me, her times like this is worth the rental fee alone. Also debuting this month is Alleluia the Devil's Carnival, a sequel to the cult film experience from the team behind Repo the Genetic Opera. 
I keep having people telling me I need to see the first Devil's Carnival movie, and trust me, it's on my to-do list. I have to say both movies look fascinatingly bizarre, so check out the tour dates for a showing near you. I definitely would like to see more independently produced film musicals in the future. It's a great way to see adaptations of shows that are smaller, more obscure, or otherwise might not appeal to a broader audience. Can you imagine a small-scale, intimate film version of Next to Normal? <sighs> we can dream. I'm Diva, I know the score, and now, so do you. 